had a lot of practice with the system um, volunteering my time in a school that uses that curriculum in Kumasi. That was even way before I got married. Sometimes you feel so stressed. Sometimes you feel, am I going to make it? You can't really predict the future. So if you are not very focused and determined to get it done, you may back off along the lines. I mean, just encouraging them. Because you see, when you're going through a process of transforming, it's hard. It's like there's an old you competing with a new you. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a lot of people, and this is why they give up. The differences of our upbringing can play a huge role and can become the reason why we have conflict. So I told them that if you don't employ me, how do I get the experience? I mean, that I need to survive in the industry, and they were shocked. On life's journey, um, not everyone is meant to be with you on that journey. Be a part of She Inspires this and every Wednesday on the I Am Drive on sunny 88.7 FM, 8.30 AM, and live on Facebook same time. Also join in on Sunny TV every Wednesday at 8.30 AM. She Inspires is proudly brought to you by... She inspires. Outside the glamour, the applause, and the entourage that comes with being the first lady of a mega church, we go back to visit the humble beginnings of the first lady of Royal House Chapel International, who has turned 60 years this year. My name is Jennifer Jessica Dankra, and this is She Inspires. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to our sponsors, Hotel Casareri. Duffy's Health and Beauty, Saraban, Ajili Jewelry, Fair's Choice Hand Beauty, and Secure. My guest on She Inspires today is the gorgeous Mama Rita Crunchy Ankara. Duffy's Ohima Nyo. Duffy's Ohima Feminine Miss Chanty. A massable so many so Emma. Ye bui and sa yente yo via. A son sees ye man cassa. Duffy Abusiana Ekesi. In tea dear mouth for comfort. A new panel. That is shower gel. And poor no money. You want to tum dear. And a cocoa dear. What did Jaria? And my natural look. Men so dear, me so deafies feminine cleanse and any capsules. Yes, yes, yes. And my main thing, Carboni be a me, Jimmy, who dear and cassa. Daffy new panel. And what dance here, baby? Daffy sana. A bar my inna. And cratoy, every year you show my jar to say. Elegance, comfort, pristine, relaxing. Welcome to Hotel Casaveri, located in the heart of East Legon, Accra. Perfect home away from home. With incomparable attention to detail, we have mastered the unique culture of Ghanaian hospitality. Treat yourself to delicious local and continental dishes from our 24-hour restaurant and take a cold swim to relieve your stress. Call Hotel Casareri today on 0540-348876 for a truly royal experience. Oh, finally, the week is ending. So Akosia, what are your plans for the weekend? You know my Saturdays, they are spent at First Choice Hair and Beauty Salon. It is almost like a family hangout. I can get my hair done together with my daughter, while my husband gets that classy grooming that makes him look so fine. Eh? Have you not done that? <laughs> then we sit together and have a money petty session while we just talk and sip on some juice. We all head to the spa for a relaxing massage. It is all about pampering ourselves with Cynthia. It's the number one stop shop for your comfort in beauty for the whole family. They are into beauty supplies as well. Nail extensions eight. And when my in-laws in town, we take her along to select the latest wigs from the Asana Care Collection. Variety Panny. Hey, sir. Yes. Locate First Choice Beauty Salon on the Spintex Road, 200 meters from Zenith Bank. Call 0244-370-894 or WhatsApp 0249-970-407. Someone just see him go. This baby can run all day long. I wonder what I would do if there were two of him. I am very happy I decided to wait before having another child. 
Luckily, I met a family planning advisor at a salon who gave me great advice. I also claim the advantage Secure gives. Now I can space the birth of my children as I want. With Secure, I decide. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Mama Rita, it is such an honor to have you in She Inspires. And you look so gorgeous. Thank you. How do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People ask me all the time, but I think I take very good care of myself. Um, I don't just eat anything. I make sure that I eat well. Um, number two, I try to exercise. Um, as much as I can, I gym three times in a week and I do a lot of walking. And then I have also learned to take a day at a time mm. and to learn to forgive everyone. I mean, even before you hurt me, I have forgiven really? you already. Yeah. Um, I try not to keep bitterness and hurt. What people do not know that the person who hurt you is free and you are aching. The Bible says that a wounded heart, who can bear? So once your heart is wounded, you are hurt. It shows on your face. It shows on your skin. It shows on your health. It shows on your, whether you are smiling or, you know, it all always tells on you. So as, as much as I can, I try to forgive people and not keep bitterness inside of me. That's, those are some healthy tips for us mm. <laughs> to pick up on the show today. Mm. And I wanted to find out the morning of your 60th birthday, when you woke up and you opened your eyes, what are some of the thoughts that started running through your mind? Honestly, on my 60th birthday, it wasn't just the morning, but at 12 midnight, one minute past 12 midnight, I got so grateful. I mean, I was so, so grateful to the Lord for seeing my 60th birthday. I mean, so grateful because I know so many people wish to see their 60th birthday and they never do. I know people who die at age 35, at age 49, 59. And for me to see my 60th birthday, I still can't stop thanking God for God bringing me this far. And also, I have seen 60-year-olds. Honestly, I have seen 60-year-olds. And they look, I don't know what English term to use, but they look so much grandmother-ish. And I thank God <laughs> that at age 60, I can smile. I can talk, I can walk, and everybody tells me I look younger you than I was looking at age 50. How and do you feel when you hear comments like that? I feel good, and um, like I said, for all of this, I'm so thankful so to thankful. the Lord. It doesn't look like I haven't been through times. I've been through difficult times. I've had my fair share of sicknesses and blah, 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 blah. But for me to look this way and feel this way at age 60, all I can say is thank you to that Amen. man up there. Amen. Amen. Thank you to him. And we're privileged to see some of the celebrations <laughs> that came with your birthday. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I saw was a video that went viral of the Apostle General down on his knees, you know, one knee, proposing to Mama Rita. How, how did that experience feel? Well, I felt like I have gotten what I didn't get <laughs> when I was 23 <laughs> and when I was 24. He never went down and proposed to me. All he said was, God says I should marry you. And I said, so there's nothing like I love you. There's nothing like, you know, yeah. every young something lady, romantic. oh, something romantic, oh my God. In those days, he was typical creepy. So at least I've gotten what I didn't get. Why do you think it took, it took so long? <laughs> In those days, I think 
all they wanted was serving God mm -hmm. and being so crefaged and thou sayest the Lord <laughs> and the Lord says and I mean that is what we met yeah. during those days of scripture union we came from the typical scripture union background so at that time well I wasn't even expecting it that much but I see these days people bringing flowers and the rings and there's a trumpet and they are the airport and I I say to myself I wish I got that and I think I've complained to him so many times <laughs> that he's decided that at any opportunity he gets he, you propose again I keep telling him I never had a courtship <laughs> why my courtship was prayer all night Bible studies spiritual courtship um, uh, going to Achimota Forest. Forest to pray, Legon Gardens to pray, retreat. That is all I got <laughs> during my courtship. <laughs> I never went out to the beach. I never uh, went watching films and um, all those things. I mean, it was out of our syllables in those days. It, it was all um, prayer and, and I have complained to him that I never had courtship. So any least opportunity he gets, he's decided that he would actually propose to me and make sure that the courtship I didn't get, I you am getting get now. It. So I believe that is what he's been doing. And he did mm. it in grand style. Oh. It was so beautiful to watch Apostle General do this. It was so beautiful. I will let him know <laughs> <laughs> that he has paid back what he didn't give. <laughs> All right, I want to find out who are some of the women you grew up looking up to when i entered into now accra technical university our time it was accra poly i became the SLC president of the school and in those days i used to admire josiah Ayi so much i remember i even invited um her for a ladies' day in Accra Technical University to talk to the women. I organized a ladies' day, a ladies' week actually, and um, the final day was a Saturday, I think, so or Friday. I invited her to come, and in those days, I thought I was going to enter into politics. You and did? Yes, I really wanted to enter into politics. Maybe if I hadn't married a pastor, I would have entered into politics. So she was one of the ladies I looked up to. And then when I became a pastor's wife, there was one lady who used to admire me so much, Mama uh, Francisca Duncan Williams. And maybe she thinks I've forgotten about her, but anybody who is listening to me must tell her I have never forgotten about her. And she's so deep inside here. So I admired what she used to do in action as a pastor's wife, organizing the women in action and the conferences she used to hold and all that. And then also as a pastor, I used to admire Mama Christido Tete. Oh my God, the woman bulldozer. <laughs> um, I think she was one of the first women who came on the scene as, as a woman of God and having her own church and the deliverances she used to do and every Wednesday she used to do what you call the hotline or something at North Kaneshi and she used to also take people to Achimota Forest to pray for them. I mean I used to admire, not I used to but I still do, I, I still do and these are the women who really, and I remember when I was in Accra Polytechnic, they used to call me Margaret Thatcher. Why? Because at that time, she used to be the Prime Minister of, of the UK. And I used to, anytime she was on the TV screen, I would go listen to her and all that. So these are the women who really, really inspired me, both on the political scene and then on the Christian scene. As you mentioned these women, I'm sure there are other women also watching the same. I believe it. That so many. I meet so women all the time and say, Mama Rita, I want to be like you. But if they can really. 
sometimes people look at us today, what we have become, and they wish to be like us. I don't know if they see my hair, my makeup, my clothes, my jewelry, my car. But listen, before you become like me, you have to go through the meal. Number one, when I got married, my husband couldn't afford a decent accommodation. And from the background I came from, to agree to live in a kitchenette, I mean a kitchenette, I didn't have money for curtains. So I used my, you know, in those days the cover is lit and the cover cloth. I used my cover cloth as a curtain. I buried my pride and everything, lived in this kitchenette in this house where you were sharing the same bathroom toilet with 30 other families. 30? Yes. You have to wake up around 4 a.m. Use a bucket. You use your bucket to queue. Because if you didn't wake up early to queue with your bucket, you will get to work at 12 midnight. Because everybody was bathing to go to work. So if you are ready to go through that, one food I never liked, I was born in Accra, but one food I couldn't start was cake cake. Because you know, they, I didn't like fermented food. I didn't like the taste of it. And that was the only food we could, we could afford. Because we entered into a relationship with a woman where we didn't have more, we didn't have money. She would borrow us the food. And when we received our national service, national service allowance, we would use our national service allowance to pay for the food. I mean, that is what we went through. If you are ready to be like that, you have to go through it, then you can be my marita. But if you are looking at me today, my darling, I am ready to disappoint you. Can't I'm sure you're following um, us on this interview and I wonder what kind of emotions are running through your mind right now as you listen to Mama Rita share her story with us. But stay with us. We'll be right back uh, to continue from where she left off. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, Sarah Ban, Duffy's Health and Beauty, Adelaide Jewelry, First Choice Hair and Beauty and Secure Pill. This is Sheen Spice. Stay with us. Duffy's of Human and you. Daffy's or him are feminine mischanty. A massa was so many so I am a ye boy and say, Yen tell you, be a son, see a man, Cassa. Daffy was your and I can say, Yen tear their mouth for a comfort and new panel. Daffy shower gel and poor no money. You want to tum dear and a cocoa dear. What did Jaria and my natural look? Men so dear, me so Daffy's feminine cleanse and any capsules, Miss Yessie. And my main thing, Carboni, be a me, Jimmy, who dear and Cassa. Daffy Nupano, and what dance here be free? Daffy Sana, a bar my inna, and Cratoy, and dear, you shall my jatu say. Oh, finally, the week is ending. So, Akosia, what are your plans for the weekend? You know my Saturdays, they are spent at First Choice Hair and Beauty Salon. It is almost like a family hangout. I can get my hair done together with my daughter, while my husband gets that classy grooming that makes him look so fine. Eh? Have you not done that? <laughs> then we sit together and have a money petty session while we just talk and sip on some juice. We all head to the spa for a relaxing massage. It is all about pampering ourselves with Cynthia. It's the number one stop shop for your comfort in beauty for the whole family. They are into beauty supplies as well. Nail extensions, eight. And when my in-laws in town, we take her along to select the latest wigs from the Asana Care Collection. Variety Pani. Hey, sir. Yes. Locate First Choice Beauty Salon on the Spintex Road, 200 meters from Zenith Bank. Call 0244-370-894 or WhatsApp 0249-970-407. Elegance, comfort, pristine, relaxing. Welcome to Hotel Casavere, located in the heart of East Legon, Accra.
perfect home away from home. With incomparable attention to detail, we have mastered the unique culture of Ghanaian hospitality. Treat yourself to delicious local and continental dishes from our 24-hour restaurant and take a cold swim to relieve your stress. Call Hotel Casarere today on 0540-348876 for a truly royal experience. Hey! Stop! You little man, just see him go. This baby can run all day long. I wonder what I would do if there were two of him. I am very happy I decided to wait before having another child. Luckily, I met a family planning advisor at a salon who gave me great advice. I also claim the advantage Secure gives. Now, I can space the birth of my children as I want. With Secure, I decide. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Welcome back. Mama Rita just painted a picture for us of how life started off as a pastor's wife in ministry. Mama Rita, you have shared the beginnings with us. Mm -hmm. Now, Rouse Chapel is a mega church. Mm -hmm. What does it take to be the first lady of a mega church like Rouse Chapel International? The people see us as pastor's wives and they say, oh, I want to be a pastor's wife. I see her, I'm Oberis and all her maidens and her ladies following her. Somebody's holding water, somebody's holding her bag, somebody's holding, somebody's her, holding her Bible, <laughs> somebody's fixing her shoes. Oh, I want to be a pastor's wife, my darling. If that is all you are seeing, please, it is more than that, Jennifer. I have no life. Everything is about church, and everything is about people. You can wear what you want to wear because you know people are looking at you. You can't do what you want to do. I mean, left to me alone, oh my God. <laughs> I won't mind wearing my shorts and feeling free and being, you know, we all love to be free sometimes. Yeah. Um, I had a book launch and the book launch that day, oh, I was so happy. It was a high tea book launch and it was so beautiful. It was a classic event. Then I was dancing to one leg. You know, I danced and danced and danced. And then I remembered, oh, this is not a gospel song. And I stopped. You know, you at you, which point of one leg did you stop? <laughs> I think shoulder. <laughs> so you brought it down immediately. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, it's even gone viral. You know, so you leave for people. Mm -hmm. Number two, you don't have a life. Oh, Mama Rita, I'm sick. Oh, Mama Rita, my son's school fees. Oh, Mama Rita, I don't have food to eat. Oh, Mama Rita, uh, my child has gained admission to infant sepem, and I don't have a trunk, I don't have a troubles. Oh, Mama Rita, you leave for people. Now, I... I'm not a phone person, but I have become a phone person. Virtually 24 seven, I have my phone on me. Why? Because I don't know when there's an emergency. I don't know when there's a casualty. I don't know when there's something I need to attend to. And sometimes you have your phone and people think that because they have your number, they can call you and ask you how you are. Just I'm not to ready nice. for that. <laughs> you know, I have my phone because I don't know when somebody enters into labor. So it's, it's, it's not easy, but sometimes it is satisfying. When somebody comes and says, oh, Mama Rita, I have graduated from the medical school. Oh, Mama Rita, today I am a lawyer. Oh, it, it feels, there's always tears in my eyes, but what people do not know is that behind the scenes, there's work going on. There's work going on 24-7. I told you I was coming from Ada. I'm doing like a rehab center, a camp center, um, a place where people can go and wait on oh. the Lord, where families can go for a family vacation and all that. 
um, in the Osudoku district, you know. And I spend a lot of time there um, seeing to work going on. My camp is coming on, and um, I have to make sure that before the camp, you know, I am there to make sure that every room is ready, um, my bunk beds are ready, um, work going on in the new site is ready, and I'm virtually on my feet for hours, you know, screaming on um, carpenters, screaming on masons, and brickwork being done, you know, it's a whole life on its own. And sometimes I go there for a week and I come back and I'm so dark because I'm virtually on the you sun. Found. Yesterday, oh my God, my lower back was hurting so much. And um, getting calls and making calls there is so difficult. So when you stand at a place where you can make a call, you, you don't want there. to, you stay there <laughs> till you finish all, all your, your calls. calls. So becoming a pastor's wife is, I don't know what other pastor's wives do, I mean, but I'm talking for myself. It's not um, an easy road. It's not an easy journey. You know, you virtually become mother of thousands. Your own biological children at home is not even easy, let alone becoming a mother of multitude. I don't know what people like. Sarah in the Bible and Rebecca in the Bible and the wife of Moses and all of them went through, but it's, it's tough. But at the end of the day, it's fulfilling when people come and tell you, oh, Mama Rita, you paid my medical bill and the, and the surgery was successful and look at me today. It's, it's very fulfilling when somebody comes and says, Mama Rita, you paid my school fees. You gave me groceries to go to school. And today I am a medical doctor. It's so fulfilling when somebody comes and says, I finished the law school. I mean, it's, it's so fulfilling. And for me, this is what makes me happy. I am happy when people come into my office crying and they can go back with a smile on their faces and laughter in their mouth. It's so, so fulfilling. Amarita, being a mother of a thousand, mm. I wonder, are you ever able to be alone, have some time for yourself? Initially, I never did. I, I live for people. And honestly, some way, somehow, it makes me happy too. I can do counseling till 6 a.m. And people will sit there and wait. And as long as they want their story to be heard, they want their problem to be heard, they will wait. But now I'm learning a bit at least in a day to make at least 10 minutes for myself. And now I'm trying. I'm learning. It's, it's not easy. Um, I think after age 50, I realized that it was also telling on me. Uh, I have done counseling through the night so many times that like a nurse or a doctor who works at night, night what people do not know that in the day when you have to sleep, you can never, ever have eight hours of sleep. So over the years, you realize that now it begins to tell on you that even when you want to have a decent eight-hour sleep in the night, you can't do it because your body has known not sleeping in the night. So that is um, where I find myself now. But I'm gradually working on it and taking a day at a time. Mama Rita, you talked about the pressures that mm. come from society, mm. how a pastor's wife should be, what kind mm. of music she should dance mm. to. Mm. And I want to know how over the years you've dealt with such pressures. We came from the typical, typical, typical scripture union background, where in those days you couldn't um, perm your hair, um, you couldn't wear trousers and shorts. We came from that background. so. Whatever I'm doing, I am not pretending. I have lived that life over the years. And, you know, what that about is me. the raising up of your children? Because these expectations are not just placed on the mm -hmm. pastor and mm -hmm. the pastor's wife, mm -hmm. but on the children. There's expectation that the pastor's child should sit here, should not sit here, should go here, should not go here, should dress like this, should not dress like this. How do parents like you handle these things in the parenting of your children well, over the years? I had always wanted my children to come out well. 
be it being pastor's children or not being pastor's children. I have always prayed for my children, for them to have an encounter with my Jesus. I have always prayed for my children, for them to love Jesus. I have always prayed for my children, for them to work for Jesus. So um, I gave them that kind of training. I came from the typical Catholic background where my mother believed that we needed to pray as a family. Um, my mother believed that when we went to church, we needed to sit down as a family. That's the way my mother believed. And whilst we are in church, my mother is watching you, the way you sit, the way you sing, even the way you hold your hymn now. You know, my mother went to Mofra True, and those days was a typical, you know, boarding school, and also went to St. Louis. Um, is it Kumasi or Mampon, St. Louis, where they were trained by Catholic, um, you know, nuns. So she brought that training into her marriage and trained us like that. You know, you go to church and my mother is expecting you to hold the hymnal like this. We go out to eat and my mother is watching you, whether you put the napkin on your lap and how you hold the fork and the knife and which fork you must take first and which knife you must take first. She's even watching you, how you pick your teacup, <laughs> you know, so she trained us like that. Okay. So with that training, I made sure that Trained I trained up my children like that. Throughout when they were growing up, I made sure that when we go to church, they sit behind us in church. When they say get up, I turn to see whether they have yeah, gotten okay. up. When we are made to sing, I want to watch if they are singing. I want to watch my children go to the altar to pray. So I didn't do it because they are pastor's children. I did it because I wanted my children to turn well. I remember at one time, I would never forget it, my third child who got married last year. She went from prom. You know prom? Yes. She went for prom. And I have seen in films, I have read that most people break their virginities on the prom day because parents are loose after the prom party, they make them stay. Some of them go to hotels, sleep over. So immediately at 10 p.m., even before 10 p.m., there was a, a car <laughs> and a driver <laughs> waiting for her mm -hmm. at school. Immediately at 10 p.m., my husband said the driver should bring her home. And you know, around 10, that is when the party and the That's prom is starts. eating up and they are dancing and, you know, some parents are so loose, the children will hoard alcohol into, you know. So I remember that they had traveled. I was in America then. She called me, cry, mommy, I don't want to be the daughter or the child of a pastor oh. any longer. Daddy says I should come home and the party is not getting it's nicer. Not getting hotter. But now, I believe that she knows it, that at the end of the day, we meant well. She stand up so well, and everywhere I go to, people ask me, what do you do? How has your um, children turned out so well? Even before they got to adulthood, anytime I went out preaching, and I went with them in those days, I used to preach at Action Women and a lot of places. People ask me, what did you do? I didn't do anything extraordinary. I didn't train them to be pastors, the children of, of, a pastor. of a pastor. I trained them normally. You know, I wanted them to become born again. I wanted them to have an encounter with Jesus. I wanted them to fall in love with Jesus. I wanted them working for Jesus. So I, I trained them that way. And they also ended up being like that. Enough. But... Sometimes I also feel that maybe I failed in a way. Mm. She inspires with Mama Rita and is getting more and more interesting. So we're going to have to wrap up here and bring you a part two of this next week. Thank you to our sponsors.
Adelphi's Health and Beauty. If you want feminine products, if you're looking for weight management products, you want skincare products, speak to our friends at Duffy's Health and Beauty. And if you're ever looking for a unique outfit for that special event you're coming up or that special occasion, speak to our friends at Sarah Bang, they are inside Kanda. Also, Eddie's Pizza, First Choice Hand Beauty, and Secure Pill. Thank you all for joining us on this first episode of She Inspires with Mama Rita Crunchy Ankara. We are back next week with part two of our conversation with her. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jennifer Jessica Dankra. Bye-bye.